Hey there YouTube, it's Nick with Feeding Fitness. Today I'm going to do another video in my series about why we're fat. Today I'm going to talk about weight regain. Because um, this is uh, something that definitely contributes to um, people being overweight and obese. Lots of people who struggle with obesity have lost weight at some point in their life. Um, I think they say, I don't know the statistic, but there's a huge number of people that will report they're actively trying to lose weight or they have tried to lose weight. And again, many of them are successful, at least at first, in losing some weight. The problem is the vast, vast majority of people will regain all of the weight they lost. Um, it is the odds of losing even 10% of your total body weight and keeping that off for just a year are not very good. And when you think about it, if your ideal weight is 180 pounds and you weigh 300 pounds, losing 10% of your body weight, 30 pounds, still puts you at obesity. And even just doing that, the odds of being successful are very low. So weight regain is definitely a problem. So what good is losing all this weight if you're doomed to put it back on? So how did I prevent weight regain? I am many years post losing over 100 pounds. So I feel I have successfully prevented weight regain. Sure, it could happen at any point down the road, but um, I feel like the longer out you are, the better chance you have of making your weight loss permanent. What are some factors that contribute to weight regain? Um, first, let's talk about some of the things that aren't so true. People will always claim these factors, and we'll explain a little bit about why they're mostly BS. All right, a lot of people will say after they lost so much weight, their metabolism crashed, or they, they ate too few calories, they damaged their metabolism, and then they regained the weight because even eating very low amounts of calories caused them to gain weight. This just doesn't happen. There's no proof that this happens. Your metabolism doesn't get damaged from losing weight. But if you go from 300 pounds to 200 pounds, yes, you're going to have to eat less to maintain your weight. When I weighed over 300 pounds, I could probably eat 4,000, 4,500 calories to maintain my weight. When I lost 100 pounds, I couldn't do that anymore. At, at 200 pounds, where uh, about some sitting now, I'll maintain at 3,000 to 3,100 calories. Yes, you are going to have to learn to eat less the rest of your life. You're never going to get to a point where you'll be able to eat like you did when you were obese and be healthy. That Just throw that idea out. But the idea that you've somehow damaged your metabolism and that you have to exist on very low calories, there's just no science there. Um, Sorry, <laughs> it's not true. What in reality actually happens is um, people will lose a lot of weight eating very low calories and then when they start to regain and blame it on their damaged metabolism, it's really inaccuracies in calorie counting. They're eating more than they think. Um, they were eating more than they thought when they were losing weight. Um, that, that's so many times the answer is you're eating more than you think. I really can't stress that enough. Uh, but that is not really why you're regaining. Now, here are some reasons you actually are regaining your weight. Your diet was not sustainable, and you had no exit strategy. So, sure, it's okay to use tactics, especially initially, to lose weight that you can't keep up with for your entire life. People will often say, oh, when you, when you try and lose weight, you've got to do something sustainable. Well, yes and no. When I first started dieting, my plan was not sustainable. There was no way. I was eating very few calories. I was doing a whole lot of exercise. Eventually, I was not going to be able to keep up with that. And to start off, I'm going to say that that's not the worst thing in the world to do. There's actually some research showing that those who have an initial rapid large weight loss will ultimately be more successful in keeping weight off and losing more weight than people who go the slow and steady route. That being said, you must have an exit strategy. At some point, you have to have a plan to transition from what you're doing to something that is sustainable. And I did that. Um, eventually, once I cut a fair amount of weight, I realized I'm going to have to slow this down, and now I'm going to have to be in this for the long haul. 
this initial 30, 40 pounds in a brief period of time was awesome, but it's got to slow down now. And that, I think, is key. When you have your exit strategy built in, you're going to be able to sustain your weight loss. So if you're going to do something like low carb or you're going to do something like, you know, create a huge caloric deficit, definitely make sure you have a transition plan. Don't, you know, my goal is to lose 50 pounds and then when I lose 50 pounds, you can't do that. You have to have that exit strategy. You have to know exactly what you're going to do when you reach your goal or sometimes long before you reach your goal and you just have to be ready. Now, I feel the best strategy as always, and I say this every time, is pure calorie counting. If you know your calories while you're losing and you just continue to count your calories while you're maintaining, you really can't go wrong. Um, if you're gaining weight, you're eating more than maintenance. It's plain as that. So you just need to eat less until you're maintaining weight. That's it. That's the only thing you have to do to maintain weight loss. So then people beg the question, do you plan on calorie counting the rest of your life? And the way I answer that is, if necessary. Um, it has become so routine, and when you've calorie counted for years, it becomes so easy and so routine that the prospect of doing it for the rest of my life doesn't really seem like a big deal. It, it's Calorie counting for me takes up no more time per day than brushing my teeth. And I plan on brushing my teeth the rest of my life, so if I have to calorie count the rest of my life, it's not the end of the world. Now I say that there may come a time in life where my priorities have changed, where my goals have changed, where calorie counting, strict calorie counting is not necessary. I feel like right now, if I didn't have more advanced goals um, and I was just comfortable being healthy, uh, weight for size or for height and just all, all around just all around health was my only goal and I didn't want to have abs in the summertime and I didn't want to pursue things in the gym I feel like I could do that without calorie counting I feel like I know about enough about nutrition and have enough of an idea of how much to eat that I could remain healthy without calorie counting but as I've explained, I have more extreme goals. They require more extreme measures. So I will calorie count as long as I need to. And that should not scare you. That should not be, you know, it really is. Once you've done it for a year, it's so easy and so second nature. And the tools available um, between computer software and all that make it so simple that that idea should not scare you. So if you're calorie counting, your prevention of weight gain is built in. Just continue to calorie count, and if you start gaining weight, reduce your calories. Finally, another reason weight is gained, people don't understand this giant shift in water weight. Um, you're going to lose a lot of water weight when you first start dieting. If you diet low carb, or if your diet, it's not specifically low carb, but you've done such a calorie reduction, it ends up being much lower carb than you're used to, you're going to see a huge swash of water weight just gone. Now, I will warn you, when you return to maintenance, there's a good chance some of that might come back. I know for me, my first two weeks of dieting, and I've done so many cycles, it's so reliable, I will lose like five pounds in the first week, four pounds in the second week, and then I go to a much more steady one pound to one and a half pounds a week. That nine pounds in the first two weeks, it's right there waiting for me as soon as I switch back into maintenance. So if your goal weight is a certain number, you may want to overshoot that by a little bit, knowing full well that when you make this transition into maintenance, you're going to gain some weight. I always say the first two weeks after you change your diet around, forget it, throw it out. What happened really doesn't matter. It's what happens after that that's much more important because that's about the time it takes for your water um, shifts to balance out. So that's also part of the weight gain. If you have a small amount of weight to lose, if you only have about 20 pounds to lose, this makes it even more difficult because your water weight shifting might be 25, even 50% of what you plan on losing. So you have to take that into consideration when you're doing your weight loss. But ultimately, the only reason we're going to regain any weight post weight loss is if we eat more calories than we burn. Period, period, period. There's nothing more to it. Why we eat those calories is uh, an individual thing, but 
This is why I always recommend calorie counting so much because then you know exactly how much you're eating per day. So if you're gaining, just roll back calories. It makes it so easy to know where you're at all the time. Um, but that is it for this video. That's why you regain weight. You're eating more than you're burning. It's always that. So if you like the video, do give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Questions, comments can go down below or over at Facebook at facebook.com upslash feedfitness. And I'll see you guys next time.